This is a little bit of a throwback tip. I was showing a buddy of mine Obsidian recently and I did this without even thinking about it and it blew his mind. He was like, what, what was that? And that's when I realized, oh yeah, I should probably make a whole video about this. Now, in order to properly understand when you would use this, we have to do a little bit of a history lesson of Obsidian in case it may not make sense for you. So I wanted to do this up top instead of waiting to the end because somewhere in the middle, you might be like, this isn't for me. So let's get into it. Hello, welcome. I am Jonathan from Plus One Creator. My whole goal is to help you be more creative and accomplish more in less time, more efficient and profitable for the cool stuff that you've got going on. And one of the main ways of doing that in my head is helping you have your own personal knowledge database of everything that you know and everything that you are creating in one place. And that's why I love Obsidian. So I've got a lot of videos about Obsidian and how to use it as a one person creator shop, enterprise, business, whatever you want to call it. And for this one, like I said, I want to do a little bit of a history lesson because back in the old days of working with Obsidian, there used to be two ways of using it. And one was a source mode and the other one was a reading mode. Now, if you are a computer coder or you're deep into computer science, you're probably familiar with the text editor Vim and then the way that you can interact and navigate a document which is in reading mode, and then you have to hit I for insert mode where you can actually insert text and then all of your commands are completely different. Obsidian was kind of like that because there would be a way to see it with all the formatting that you had applied. And then now you can't edit anymore, but you can see the document the way that all the formatting should look. So that's why there was the reading mode and then the editing mode would show you all the hard code source material, the, the hashtag one would be a big heading and hashtag two would be a, a smaller heading and, and that kind of thing. Now along came the reading preview mode, which basically means that the reading mode is what you're seeing until you want to edit one of the lines and then you click into the line and then you see the source elements of just that line. That's what preview mode is. And then that way you can ostensibly see the document the way that it will render and edit all at the same time without having that goofy, I've got to switch between views kind of thing that you have to have in the old way of doing it. Now, back in the days of read and source as the only ways of doing this, what I'm about to show you is was more common, but there are still reasons why you might want to do this. So that's what I want to jump into a quick screen share to show you, and then we'll meet back here for a few final thoughts that I've got. So hello, welcome. We have the trusty vault, which is exactly how we left it. I have a new note open and we're going to put in some placeholder text. So that way we've got some stuff to work with and we can come back up here, hit enter, do a big old heading this way and then another one this way and here you can see that we are in source mode so we can go back to uh, go to reading view and then we see what it looks like in reading view and then we can toggle back to source view um or not toggle reading view and now we're back into source mode, right? Uh, which the keyboard command that I have it set up for is command E. So I can hit command E and flip between them if, if I want as well. And then we can do preview 
source mode, toggle live preview source mode. Now, this is what I was talking about where you can toggle that. And then when I click, you see that the, the styling elements are now visible, but it goes away as soon as I click out of it. So if you hang out in this preview mode, then this doesn't make as much sense to you, but check this out. Let's get out of preview mode and only do source and reading mode this way. Okay, so imagine that you wanted to edit and see what it's going to look like at the exact same time. Here's how you do it. This is what I, I'm saying all of this to eventually get to, which is we can split the plane vertically, split right, which I think I've covered before in previous videos about setting up a workspace versus a uh, dashboard kind of thing. Um, but here, you could have any other file open that you want. So we could do uh, something like this. Okay, so this is all here. And now you can work on multiple documents at the same time. And if you didn't know what splitting the view meant, this is it. So then we can go back to split example. And you see they're both in source mode. But here, let's turn this one by, I just hit Command E to switch to reading view. And then this one is in reading view. And this one is in source mode. And this I can interact independently. But check this out. This is the old, old school thing that you may have seen in your options, but didn't even know, oh, that's what that does. So here we go. We right click on the tab of the split where we want to connect it to. Then you go link with tab, click link with tab. And it's like, which tab do you want to link it to? I want to link it to this one. So I click and now this little link icon shows up to show you that, oh yeah, they're both linked. And when you mouse over it, it says unlink tab. So you can break this link at any time that you want from either of these tabs. But still, we haven't seen what that does. Here's what it does is if I scroll in the source mode tab, it scrolls in the read mode tab. Now they're linked and now we're interacting with both of them at the same time in the same way. Works the same other, the, the reverse way too, which if I, if I scroll in the read only mode, then it will scroll in the other tab. So that's what it means to be linked but I can click into this read mode. I can highlight, but I can't, I'm typing, but it's not going to accept it. But if I come over here and do second heading, it's putting it in without showing you the source code here. Okay, but then you can do bold text like this, and then it will render as bold in the reading view. Or you can do an aside like this, and it does it. Or you can do a, a call out, insert call out, and you can say it's an alert, and the title is be aware contents. There are things to keep and I out for. There we go. So now you can see the source and the way that it's going to look all at the same time. Now, this is really, really handy if you're doing a lot of coding, if you're doing a lot of, of very special italics and bold over here. And if your, if your theme is like Dracula and very colorful, then this could help you out if you are editing and then you want to see what it looks like all at the same time, which is pretty cool. So that was a long way of getting here, but I wanted to help you understand that uh, this may not work for you if you're always in preview mode, but in the times that you need it, this is really cool. And that's what link tab is all about. 
So hopefully that helps you understand, oh yeah, that's this feature that I've never seen nor understood ever before. So that's about it. Let's get back to the good camera. So there you go. What do you think about that particular thing of splitting the panes and then linking the tabs so that you can see both at the same time? Is that ever going to be something that you use or are you mostly a preview mode editing only kind of person? Was this something that you had known about? This is the first time you've ever heard about it. I, I genuinely want to hear how this one lands because it is one of those things that it send, it tends to seem like it either blows your dang mind or you're like, that is the most useless thing I've ever seen in my life. So I'd love to know which of those two camps you fall into. And if you are curious about how to take your personal knowledge database game deeper, then su consider subscribing to the channel. If you enjoy the video so far, I would love if you gave it a like. That lets me know that this is the kind of thing you would like to see more of. And it lets YouTube know that other cool folks like you might benefit from seeing this video as well. So that is the, the smallest thing that you can do that has the biggest effect on helping other folks find the right information. So you're doing the universe a solid there. And if you would like to take your solo creator game to the next level, then go check out plusonecreator.com, sign up for the email list. You'll get a full list of the tools that I use as a professional creator. It is a, a spreadsheet that is always kept up to date with the latest and greatest tools that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis as a, a solo creator entrepreneur kind of person. So if that sounds up your alley, again, go to plusonecreator.com and we'll get you taken care of over there. That's it for this video. Thank you so much. If you would like to dive deeper into Obsidian, make sure to check out this playlist. That'll show you everything you've ever wanted to know and a whole bunch of stuff you didn't know about. And I will see you over there. Remember, if you can change your mind, you can change your life.